Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, Neil Twa from Voltage Holdings has helped build over 1,000 businesses on Amazon. So what is the secret to achieving such success on Amazon? He joins us on the phone now from the US to reveal all. But Neil, how did your time working with IBM prove to be useful to you when you started out in business? Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. The time and energy and attention that was spent there was amazing for relationships and the flexibility of the work-life balance. Um, having to basically work from a cell phone and a laptop gave me that freedom of movement uh, and understanding how to do business uh, at a really large scale as we were working with really large companies and really large projects. So it was quite eye-opening. When did you first decide to enter the e-commerce world? So a couple of years prior to that, my mentor, who was also my uncle, had passed away. And one of the things we had discussed prior to that was, you know, how I would exit that um, because I'd never really wanted to do it in the first place, get into the corporate world. I needed to because of the Internet uh, and things with uh, business weren't growing fast enough in the academic world um, due to just changes in the market. So um, I had gotten into uh, building a business of consulting and needed to grow that business through direct marketing and got on the, on the line and started learning in 2008 and nine how to do direct marketing on the internet. And that just, uh, I found I had a good aptitude for it. And what was your approach to product selection? Well, um, it basically got down to testing um, in the product in the niche it ser- itself as a direct response marketer. I was really looking into who wants this product, what is the demand, what is the competition, and is there a hole in there in which I can innovate my way in front of those customers with a new option. And so that product research led to a methodology um, called our green light process, which is a uh, numbers by numbers methodology of determining which products to sell, which ones not to marry, and then which ones the data says we should actually scale. And where are you getting that research from? So that's a whole database information experience selling more than a thousand products uh, in the last 12 years. We have a whole database of, of information um, our client accounts, our personal accounts, and we have built systems and, and technology around that in order to go out and pull that information in, be able to analyze it quickly and make decisions on new products or what to do with existing products. So talk to us about Amazon FBA and how it is helping businesses to develop their brand. Yeah, so if you're a small business, a mom and pop or a startup guy, or even just somebody who wants to go and develop a new revenue stream, um, the fulfilled by Amazon infrastructure is quite amazing. Actually, it's, it's amazing the thing even works. It's the sixth largest logistics company in the world. It was a company that Amazon purchased to fulfill products for them back around 2009. Uh, so they wire wrapped it into their full and it delivers the product the last mile to the customer door. You get it, you open it, and you're happy with it. We can leverage that entire you know, multi-billion dollar infrastructure without you know, building our own trucks, our own warehouses, our own people. And it really creates a done-for-you automation system in which I can focus on the direct response marketing and worry less about the logistics and supply chain, even though we manage it. We just manage it on dashboards and blinky light systems and, you know, like an air traffic controller that they handle all the product movement, free me up and not have to do all the infrastructure costs, plus the freedom and, and flexibility of doing it personally on, on 50 acres in the country while we homeschool our children and have a, a great life while building seven and eight-figure branded businesses through that platform. And what is wholesale arbitrage and how common is it on Amazon? Yeah, so Amazon allowed that on their platform as a part of the platform that would be um, product flipping. I found something I want to sell. I found something at Walmart on clearance. I can sell it for more money. Um, I'm flipping between online platforms and online arbitrage. But Amazon's very much against that. In fact, they've done a whole concerted effort over the last five to six years to shut most of that down uh, and remove it because it does a return of a negative value to the company. They have to deal with a lot more inventory. They have to deal with a lot more sellers who don't know what they're doing and kind of jacking up. So you come to prefer people who build private label brands over people who flip and do wholesale and arbitrage and that kind of stuff. And so really they've been um, out shutting those accounts down, uh, shutting the accounts down. So if you hear a lot of negative press online about Amazon shutting people's accounts down, you can usually always track it back to one of those methodologies. It's more rare that they shut a private label branded business who is trademarked with intellectual property, brand registration, and, and has an LLC and a corporation than individual you know, businesses or little people who are out just trying to flip products for profit. It's never how they intended the system to ultimately grow, but the marketers took advantage of it and sold a bunch of people into it. And it's a little bit of a side hustle, but it won't last very long. And what are the main challenges facing retailers on Amazon? Yeah, so the market evolves and it has evolved into greater competition uh, due to larger, you know, investment capital firms, PE firms, corporations, big investment groups, or just multi-family uh, groups that can have the capital to compete. And so it's created market segments where the opportunity cost um, to get into it is a little bit higher. 
So when we sell products now, we've elevated products from 50 to $250 in retail price point in order to match the profitability and the additional fee structure and to ensure that our products have profit in every unit. And so every product is profitable in the brand. And of course, that falls to the overall bottom line of the business and the net profit of the business. So smaller businesses and business owners um, are still believing that, you know, a few thousand dollars can get them started in private label. But that was about 10 years ago. Now you need to have minimum of twenty to $30,000 uh, to go to market. That's testing and growing. Then you need another twenty to 30000 to grow what's working. And then you can actually really compete in the market where a lot more dollars have, been, have made it into the market and has matured significantly. So the barrier of entry is greater for those who get involved. However, the opportunity cost of that is, is huge upside potential. And what's involved in the testing phase? Testing is basically going to the market and asking the market, would you buy this product from me? You've bought it from other people, other brands, would you buy it from me? It is a um, sales fixes everything methodology, which means if I can get in front of them and I can prove that they're willing to buy a product from me and I can test the data and validate that the data sells on say a hundred unit or 200 unit test, it's like a market sample a test. And once I determine the data is good and I determine I can sell that product in my account for this amount of profit, I have confidence in going and ordering a thousand units of those product and continuing to launch that product out into the market even greater with the expectation of certain profitability that will occur in a 12 month run rate. With that, I know to put good money after good products and stop putting bad money after bad products. And why did you decide to develop your own software and what results did this data mining tool deliver for you? Well, first and foremost, we are sellers and we're operators and the software was for our company in order to make it easier and faster for our operators to deploy products into the market, test those products and help us make determinations of which products get capital and which products will run out, uh, how we monitor those products, how we manage the marketing and PPC, dollars and cents. And so that's an internal engine that we built. Uh, on that software in order to run our enterprise. We then gave our clients basically license to access behind a non-disclosure agreement to access that software and utilize it as well. I don't sell it to the public. It's only available for their benefit for ours. So we did it as a normal process of business. And where do you obtain the data from that that enables you to implement the RISE algorithm? Yeah, so we use two to three different data sources um, combined from algorithms that we have developed over the years. It's part of what I did when I was at the IBM. Uh, life, <laughs> building human machine language and artificial intelligence engines with the Armuk, uh in New York and the, and the IBM team got very good at understanding how um, these search engines and systems work. And so we just apply that to our own algorithms and develop those into our own business model uh, later on and created our own unique system. And with the end result, uh, we're able to see data and patterns. We're able to grow data and patterns. And then the product and system engine literally brings us product data automatically that we can take a look at that fits in our green light process and we can very quickly maneuver through the market and competition, opportunity costs, and then launch those products. So what is the four-step process that has helped you to build over 1,000 businesses on Amazon FBA since 2012? First one is understanding what the heck do I sell and who do I sell it to. Uh, a critical component of the demand or capturing the demand on a platform like Amazon, we are also a omni or multi-channel, meaning we sell on other stores shops online as well in a holistic e-commerce. Amazon is just a just one channel we sell on, to be very clear. But in that, we also understood the numbers. You know, you've got to go buy the numbers in business to determine the fundamentals of a product, a P&L, uh, that rolls into a brand and creates profitability at the base of the product itself and certain profitability requirements, like a minimum of $12 in net profit per unit or we don't launch the product. So we created baselines of business uh, expectations in our processes to make sure that occurred. We don't manage our products. Everything has a life cycle. Everything has an opportunity. That's the third one. Um, the fourth is ensuring that we understand the brandability of the product uh, and the creation of brand and brand value in the market to, to differentiate ourselves. There is the system of data and traffic itself, which is the fourth one, um, that basically gives us the opportunity to understand the organic traffic that is on demand, the 8,600 units moving a minute inside of that. 8,600 units a minute is a lot of traffic. <laughs> To capture demand when done correctly and how to get this engine and this basically this algorithm to show our parts to more people. And then a bonus one would be the fifth, and that's literally the, you know, building these business with the end in mind. They're worth more in the end than at any time during the business building phase. And so understanding the value of this company in three to five years and its ability to get three to five times the profit at exit is why we build with the exit in mind from the very beginning. And what are the common mistakes that people make when selling on Amazon? 
common mistakes are that people don't treat it like a business. They still see it as a side hustle or a hobby business. They don't understand that while you can do this, like Adam, who's a full-time pharmacist with a wife and two kids, his end game is to make this his entire life and business. While he's doing it on the side, while working his business, his intent isn't to make a few thousand dollars a month. That's a limiting belief system that's built into that whole model. His realization is I can turn this into an entire lifestyle, an entire business model for my future, my family. My legacy is handing my kids this opportunity uh, once I learn how to do it. And so they, they typically see these things as a side hustle or a hobby business, and they don't really just realize the time, energy, attention, and the money or the team effort required to really make these companies become what they are. And they can't quite grasp the entire market engine of e-commerce, being that it is the fastest growing double digit industry in the world. It's a trillion dollar business in the world. It is $1.1 billion uh, in market share in the United States. Um, uh, it's, it's just enormous. It's actually much larger than that. Um, Amazon itself holds 5% of all U.S. retail, 49% of all online sales. It's an absolute juggernaut, that one engine. And you add on TikTok shops and other things, and people just don't realize just how grand a scope that actually is once you approach it and attack it. Um, and then, you know, they, they overcomplicate things. They, they hear and they understand, but they don't quite listen. And they, they think it's actually more complicated than it is. But when you follow a process, it's not as complicated. Of course, Amazon is putting huge focus now on their advertising revenue. What percentage of your 1,000 clients are reliant on spending on advertising within Amazon to generate sales today? In this day and age, uh, which is very different than like 10 years ago, I've been at this for 12 years. So in the last four to five years, the requirement for brands to spend on Amazon marketing and what's called pay-per-click marketing is now a requirement. Every business has to spend on it. But here's the opportunity for spending and getting what's called a return on advertising spend, or ROAS. And that is in the ecosystem that Amazon is, and it's one unique location, one platform, as we've mentioned, there's, there's many others. But for this particular one, when I buy advertising uh, dollars on Amazon, and that can actually turn into organic ranking. It's one of the only platforms in which my marketing dollars can actually affect my SEO or organic ranking for my products. So there's a combination of a, of a term called um, tacos, total advertising cost of sale. And we actually follow that metric. That is a balance between organic sales and PPC sales. So it isn't a matter of not spending PPC. It's a matter of minimizing and max, uh, PPC to maximize its ROAS so that I can balance my organic. Then like that, then my clients like David LeBlanc, and there's a podcast uh, you guys can go check out on the High Voltage Business Builders podcast he just did where his half a million a month is 80% organic, 20% pay per click. So when you do it correctly, there's an opportunity to really take over the SEO engine, but you're still going to need to acquire customers. You have to acquire them. It's part of business, right? Um, organic is fun and good, and of course, who doesn't want a full organic sale? But at the end of the day, if I can acquire more customers than my competition, I win. Once a business has maximized the growth of their private label brand, what exit strategies should they be considering? So they should always build the business as though they're going to exit it. Even if they're not going to exit it in three to five years, they should always have the framework in place. That means accounting, uh, the business, the structure of the LLC, taxes and formation, the management and operations and cash flow, chart of accounts and everything should be set up like a real business from the very beginning. And certain tasks you're not strong at, you should outsource from the very beginning, like bookkeeping and other simple things uh, to get you focused on the most revenue generating activities. The goal with the business in the end to exit, if you're a single channel on Amazon, it's going to be a little more difficult now to sell just a single channel business, but it's doable. And on Amazon, you may get up to 3x your EBITDA if you have a business that is running more than 18% net profit. 15 to 18% will roughly get you between 2.8 and 3x. Um, if you're a little bit above that, you could get up to 3.2x on your EBITDA. If you are multi-channel, if you have at least five to 10% additional revenues coming from other channels off Amazon, could be a Shopify, a TikTok shop, an Etsy, or Walmart, or Wayfair, or some other marketplace where you're selling and opening that business up to new customers and acquiring those customers through that channel, you could see five to seven X uh, multiples. If you have subscribe and save, um, which is monthly recurring revenue on Amazon, people who are buying every month or every quarter, your product continuously, and you set up subscriptions over on, say, Shopify, and you add on those additional subscriptions. I've seen company valuations go as high as 10 to 15x. 
In your book, Almost Automated Income with FBA, you address the areas of profit, growth, scale and exit by providing the reader with case study examples. Can you share some of these success stories with us? Yeah, so just, uh, you know, I mentioned David earlier. He's a great one. Daniel, he's a gentleman who came in and, you know, in Daniel's case, he had an existing business. Uh, was doing about 30000 a month, but he had, after six months of doing it, was basically cost him over 30000 a month to run the business. So he had really made no profit. When he came to us, he said, hey, maybe we can figure this thing out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to just shut it down. I'm kind of done with this. I can't figure it out. And we walked him through our process. We walked him through reanalyzing his numbers. We got him to reframe and refocus some of the activities away from what was basically activity masses productivity and got him focused down on just the revenue generating activities that he should be focused on and really down to the right profit metrics that his business had to see as an opportunity. And we elevated his brand and the retail price points that he was at before giving him the ability to acquire more customers through marketing. In the next six months, he turned that into a $100,000 a month business. Uh, 18 months later, he's half a million on Amazon and 100000 on Shopify, um, putting him around the six to seven million a year mark. Um, he is scaling up to eight to 10. It's going to be not difficult because he has such a great organic traffic segment of his business now on Amazon that he is going to be able to double and triple his spend in the coming year, uh, putting him from a half a million to probably quarter of a million or more, even maybe up to a million after current projections in his business. How do you think that Amazon FBA will evolve over the coming years and what challenges and opportunities will that present? So Amazon itself is moving the systems of marketing and the engine of customer acquisition and display marketing very, very fast into the marketplace with systems like Rufus and Amelia and Cosmo and the changing AI landscape, they themselves are moving uh, their profitability and metrics around 2026 by current projections. They will be a direct marketing and response um, advertising company. They will no longer have a basis of AWS, which is the hosting platform, as their primary profitable revenue stream. So Amazon itself is moving all brands into direct marketing and response, meaning that the idea that you can just simply throw up a product isn't going to work unless you yourself want to be trained uh, or learned how to become a direct response marketer and take advantage of that system. That's your opportunity. You have about a year and a half to two years in order to get ahead of that because the systems are all changing. They're going to be on par with, say, Google in terms of the amount of inventory and media marketing they can do. So Amazon is actually evolving off uh, the physical product kind of basis they are now. And physical products, which has become one offering of a total digital offering along with Prime and Freebie and Twitch and all the inventory platforms they've purchased to make this happen. So they really are turning into a direct response marketing machine. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Neil Twall from Voltage Holdings. And the information that Neil shared with us this morning will be essential for anyone that is looking to build a business on Amazon. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.